Welcome everybody to the LifeCast. Uh, my name is Deanna Manassian. We're here with a lovely group of people. This is a real cold open. We got Sydney. Hello. We got Pat. Hey. And we got Dan. Hi. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm tired. Pretty good. Angry. <laughs> Me too, Sydney. <laughs> Over literally nothing. <laughs> Everybody's got them. Everyone's got those days. That's what Hannah Montana taught us. <laughs> <sighs> so, what's been on your radar? <laughs> what is with this like Dr. Phil tone <laughs> yeah. you got? I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. You're starting to sound a little bit like Larry King. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, but like Larry King is like an old man who who talks on the TV. I'll and try the to radio. be more hashtag relatable. Catch me on Snapchat at Knurt Dash T. <laughs> Cash me outside, how about that? Cash me outside, how about that? <laughs> this is the life cast. We're relatable. We got memes. Mames. M- Mames. <laughs> so, how about that Overwatch, guys? It's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. That it, I put yeah. way too much time into. It's a I thing. was I was playing it yesterday. Same. And Dave and I was doing like bot matches to improve my aim because mm-hmm. Dave and I were playing, mm-hmm. just the two of us, and he was like, he was spectating me like on his death cam or whatever Mm -hmm. and he he was like you need to work on your aim a lot (laughs) (laughs) which you know it's a bit of a crushing blow (laughs) i feel um so he's like okay let's go into trading and like i'll see what i can tell you to do so i did and he was like yeah you first of all you need to like work on not starting and stopping the mouse so harshly because the way he equated my mouse movements was it looked like i was using a controller on pc because i would start like really fast and then slow down Mm -hmm. and then stop really harshly as well and i i kind of fixed that a little bit Mm -hmm. and then i realized i need to support my arm while playing overwatch because my wrist cramped up after like two minutes (laughs) ow ow Ow. um yeah before I even got the game, like, the two weeks where I knew that, like, there's a PC in my future in the next month, I watched a lot of technical Overwatch videos, mm-hmm. and one of the big things that they said that, like, people who actually play the game do is they'll play with their wrist raised, and I tried yeah. to do that recently. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. But I did notice a distinct, like, change in how my mouse moved. Mm-hmm. It was weird. It's yeah. like, is this worth it? Because I don't play competitive. Absolutely not. But God, this is really good to know. <laughs> yeah, I at least want to get better. Yeah. I don't want to do competitive. But I, I want to see like a linear growth. Yeah. But yeah. And then I like we were talking about this earlier. Mm-hmm. And I would just like to put it out there that even though there are things in Overwatch that are hit scan, and even though they updated the game to work at like 60 hertz, kilohertz, whatever. Something 60 like that. 60, 60, 60 hertz. Things. Yeah, 60 hertz. Uh, it does not feel hit scan at all. I don't know if it's like the way they're communicating with the servers or anything, but like, I know I know there are hit scan heroes. Okay, don't don't come after me and be like, <laughs> um, you're just not playing the right hero. Like, I know there are hit scan heroes. Okay, it's just that it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Um, I think the only, it, it, I don't think it's a server thing mm-hmm. because. Like to me at least, uh, Soldier seventy six definitely feels like hit scan. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he has like, he's he's he has a little bit of like everything. guided bullets. Yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term. Call of Duty. And, um, once once you realize that the trail of smoke left by McCree's gun is just a trail of smoke, he feels like hit scan too. Yeah. When, when, once you actually like get that visual deterrent out of the way. Mm-hmm. No. But, yeah. There. But then you have like. Who's another hit scan? Like Anna's hit scan. Yeah, Anna's hit scan. For some things. Widowmaker is hit scan. Yes. And like a lot of the effects make. Widowmaker does not feel like hit scan. Widowmaker does not feel like hit scan. Neither does Sombra for me, and neither does Reaper, and neither does. Sombra's definitely not hit scan. Well, uh, Reaper. No, I, I think she is. Like she's marked as hit scan, but she's definitely not. Yeah. I mean, I think like she probably is a hit scan hero, like, but she doesn't. None of the hit scan heroes in this game feel like hit scan. in yeah. terms of reaper though it's also just like shotguns in general you kind of have to like be up close yeah so like the travel time won't matter exactly because yeah. like a soldier 76 i think since i don't know how to turn off tips yet it still <laughs> reminds me when i die by him it's like you should keep 
to a, a long range when fighting off against Soldier 76. I'm like, I can't always fucking do that. And, and he's like, soldiers, he's, a, he's a medium-ranged character, you know, who's not Reaper. <laughs> soldier's range is massive. Yeah. I know. I've. He is he's not, basically my main now. He is and not a medium-ranged character. Yeah. No. For him to be medium-ranged, that means the only long-ranged character in the game is Widowmaker. Yeah. Yeah. Or Roadhog's Hook. <sighs> Maybe. I don't want to talk about Roadhog's Hook. I love getting hooked through other people. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. I mean, they, they fix that. Roadhog's, know, Roadhog's Hook is the best example of hit scan in Overwatch because it actually feels like hit scan. It feels like Roadhog scans you from the crowd and then hits you. I, I wholly <laughs> admit that his hook is significantly improved yeah. considering like now if he hooks you and May puts up a wall, you fall off of the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas before you used to just keep going, but there have been a couple of times where I'm like, man, this is still janky as yeah. fuck. You mm-hmm. can exca- escape the hook now. Yeah. Yes. There, there have been quite a few times where I have gotten. Out I haven't of the done hook. it as Zenyatta yet, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna stop trying. <laughs> I feel like they. Made I think it. I've done it actually. Okay, well, fuck you, Pat. Fuck you. They've made it definitely more sensitive, though, because I find yeah. I get hooked from smaller areas. Like, if my mm-hmm. shoulder's sticking out, I get hooked. Yeah, it's because oh, what yeah. they did was... um. If you have LOS, right? What? If you have line of sight. Yeah, if you have line of sight, um, and uh, when it gets to a certain point, and they do this so... You know, running back and forth behind a really thin tree doesn't break off the hook. Yeah. What it does is it the, once the hook is at its like maximum length, it does this like scan thing where it looks a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right of the hook as well. Okay. And it hooks what's there. Oh. Okay. okay. That explains how I get hooked like with my elbow. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they, they do it's it like... to counteract people cheesing the hook with like a tiny tree. Branch. Okay, that yeah. makes sense then. Okay. I'll be more mindful of that. But I'm just really glad that things like walls prevent yeah. you from being hooked now for yeah. the vast majority of the time. Yeah. And also it favors the person getting hooked when yes. uh, mm-hmm. lag happens. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate that considering my ping spiked to 2580 yesterday. 2580? Oh God. Slow ping is like 60. I know. That's my standard ping, actually. <laughs> yep. My I, standards are on 30, 40. I run it yeah. consistently. I usually run at 70 frames and 60 ping. Mine is, my ping is like 15. I also play wireless. Yeah, I play wireless. I play okay. wireless. I, I play wired. I wish I could play wired, but yeah. when I was getting my room done, my dad's like, oh, you're getting your desk on this half, so we'll put the Ethernet thing here. And then I got a different sized bed. <laughs> So now I have an Ethernet port underneath my bed and would have to run a wire all throughout my room. Oh. I don't I don't have any Ethernet ports in my room. I do have a phone jack though. For that get nice that, landline. Yep, we could get, yeah. get, get that get, sweet dial up. That nice dial up. <laughs> get that sweet dial up. Dedicated dial up. The line. thing play, though is like I, I could very dial-up? clearly yeah. see you talking on the phone with Dave, like a twirling the phone cord in your finger. Oh. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, I do that when I'm charging my phone on Discord in my bed. It's close enough. Like Hashtag not, relatable. I'm not Larry King anymore. Hashtag I'm a millennial. <laughs> like not like full on like uh, housewife way of like, oh, what she doing? But just like, oh, that's hang, me though. Hanging out there every once in a while. <laughs> not it's on funny, a daily. Cause like, <laughs> because like when I'm on the phone at work, I often like twirl the, the cord yep. around my finger. Yeah. Just don't get a rotary phone. Oh my god, I really want a rotary phone though. I really love rotary phones. But like, would you actually <laughs> use it as a phone basement. phone? Or? I'd probably use it as a like a conversation piece. Okay. I would not use it as an actual phone because you wouldn't I'm on hook that. it up. I'd hate. To I'd hook it up. Yeah. If it didn't like, if you know the Comcast package was like, oh, you need to have a landline. I'd hook like, it up definitely. Yeah. Like those ones you can connect to your phone over Bluetooth. That sort of work. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, right. I rem- I'd probably have that in my apartment. I remember I used a rotary phone to call my mom one time when I was homesick at my grandparents, yeah. and I didn't realize that you had to wait for the number to click all the way back. Yeah. yeah. And there was a nine in there, and I'd never been so angry at something that I had no <laughs> control over than watching it go from nine before I could dial again. Yep. Yeah. Like, uh, man. So speaking of Overwatch, we're getting a PTR update. Yeah, it is we are. actually available today, the day we're recording this podcast, on the seventh of February in the year of our Jesus twenty seventeen. I thought today was the eighth. No. No. no it's the seventh. Today's the seventh. Okay. 
Um, so like what's happening on dogs. PTR, guys? <laughs> 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 um, so PTR changes. There's a lot of them. Yeah, we're getting a uh, server browser. Yes. What um, do you mean by server browser? Starting today, every player can create their own unique Overwatch experience and share it with their friends, their teammates, or the entire world. Okay, Pri- we can have private servers. We can have private servers. Okay. It's an extension of the custom game mode. Lifecast private server. I yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll probably set one up for like all like eight the of lifecast us. and then like the rest. <laughs> I'll, I'll like eight nine of us. Yeah, um, that looks like it's gonna be pretty fun. Let's see. Um, oh, hold on a minute. There there are specifics that I want to read. An extension of Overwatch's custom game mode, the server browser allows you to adjust the settings on various maps, modes, and heroes, creating your own tailor-made server. If, for example, stop doing drugs on the podcast. <laughs> Dan, please. Uh, Dan, Dan was using an inhaler. <laughs> we Dan, get it, you vape. Dan's getting <laughs> high on the podcast. From, I'm moving away from the mic. It's getting high. People want to hear me asthma breathing over the podcast. <laughs> Sorry, right, let me turn on your microphone. <laughs> I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. Don't worry about it, Dan. But I um, heard it. Because you have ears. <laughs> what are ears? Anyway, Two of them. I'm like, what's his face? So let me the ear cut off artist. Let man. me continue with um Van Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh. let me continue with this explanation of the server browser that you guys asked for. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. Pat did. I didn't ask for anything. Yeah, you <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Pat, you like this tech shit. Um. Okay. Yeah. If, for example, you want to increase Farah's missile speed or remove the cooldown from McCree's combat role, the power is yours. Once you're happy with your settings and you're ready to launch your game, you'll need to set up the permissions. You can limit the number of people who can join your server by toggling the friends only or invite only options, but if you want to put your strange creation to the real test, set your server to public and click the launch button. Yo, I, I have an idea. fun as fuck. I have an idea. Yes. What? McCree just- only, one gun in the barrel, rolls. Oh. You need one, <laughs> one gun, one bullet in the yeah. chamber. <laughs> oh man, a full-on duel! I can't no, wait. No to stun. Yeah, no stun. I can't wait for the Overwatch community to come up with better weekly brawls than Blizzard. I, f- I fucking love that. I'll fucking do it. Speaking of another big change coming to PTR, <laughs> capture the flag is a permanent game mode. Fuck that mode. Gross. <laughs> in the twist that l- no one saw coming. And yeah. by that, I mean everyone saw it coming because yeah. people have been asking for it, capture the flag mode, for the longest time. I just wish it was better. It needs to be more balanced. Like, support heroes like Symmetra and like Torborn and like May need a nerf on yeah. capture the flag mode. Specifically for that mode. Yeah. I, like, I can't wait for the server browsers that are like, okay, you can't play Symmetra on this. It has to be aggressive. Yeah. So... Tracer only, melee only. <laughs> uh, that that is the first one I'm making. Capture the flag, tracer only, melee only. Goodbye. That'd be cool. <laughs> We're it's done. just like the speedy game in Halo that I used to play. Yeah. The um, speed at 300, the the gravity at 50, and only energy swords. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Capture the rooster has been without a doubt Overwatch's most popular brawl. We don't <laughs> want that excitement to doubt end. Doubt it. <laughs> I'm pretty it's, sure it's, it's mystery pretty heroes. infamous. Yeah. Pr- yeah. Well, outside of Mystery Hero, since that's its own mode, I'm pretty sure it was Junkenstein's Revenge. Yeah. yeah. Because that that was so creative. It was really Or fun. 3v3. Eh. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cool it's like, mode, but it's very limiting. Yeah. It's very limiting, and it's kind of unbalanced if you just kind of pick Roadhog. Yeah. yeah. Roadhog, Zenny, and Soldier, I believe. Oh. Um, yeah. Sometimes Vera. People who can self-heal. Yeah. So we're bringing, capture, we're bringing capture the Flag to Arcade as an ongoing game mode. Starting today, we're adder- adding... The capture the flag versions of Nepal, Li Jung Tower, Ilios, and Oasis, which gives you 12 maps to try when creating a custom game. Is there still a giant hole in the middle of Ilios? Yeah, you could probably, like, avoid. So. Like, choose a different section of it, though. CTF is also part of this whole, like, custom, the server browser custom bullshit. I want to go home, like, after we're wrapped up here. I also want to go home. (laughs) (laughs) I want to go home Eh. and, um, like, experiment with specifically the custom game stuff today. Yeah. Yeah. Since we'll probably this is all live on PTR right now, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Um. So, we're gonna talk about. (laughs) 
this is gonna become like the overwatch podcast for a good bulk of it because i want to i want to go through these updates because this is the first time i've paid attention to a ptr release because this is the first time it's caught my attention Uh, you know yeah and like this is the one thing i have to talk about this week so please throw me a bone (laughs) (laughs) um that better be blowing heat it um it might be as long as it's not air conditioning yeah it's not cold cool all right so on the mic no okay um so anna there a lot of changes that come with this ptr update is there's a lot of adjustments in sensitivity um which is up to player choice mostly yeah yeah um there there's probably gonna be like a a little slider that you can pick in your oh yeah in your hero whatever figure it out it'll be on the same page as like when you pick like button configurations yeah yeah, yeah. um so i thought they were there before honestly <laughs> yeah it's it's surprising that they didn't have these and that they're now working it in anyway anna gets um nano boost sensitivity sensitivity allows players to adjust nano boost targeting sensitivity that'll probably improve with people accidentally nano boosting the wrong person yeah it's like when you accidentally nano boost like mercy behind a roadhog it's like go <laughs> that happened to me the Don't other be day proud. <laughs> granted it was because the other team was at like 96 charge on the point and everybody else except me and the anna were dead yeah so um, i was like mercy go <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Like, it, it, if you didn't do that, like <laughs> it's a wasted ult. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bastion gets a lot of changes that I'm not happy about at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there are a lot of things Bastion like got nerfed with. Yes. And there are a lot of things that I think matter more that he got buffed with. <laughs> yeah. Um, I appreciate what they're trying to do and trying to make Bastion, like, a viable character. Because right now, he's just kind of, like, a nuisance to lower-tier players yeah, like who don't know character. how to hand it. <laughs> exactly. He's it's like exactly Bison that. Street Fighter V. It's like, if you're new to the game, you lose to him. When you learn the game, he's one of the worst characters. Or yeah. she. She, because B- Bastion's a girl. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, Bastion's a girl. Bastion's a girl? Bastion's a girl. That's adorable. Oh. He, but yeah, Bastion. it's a robot. It doesn't have a gender. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. But yeah, uh, Bastion. Uh, sentry configuration deployment time decreased from one point five seconds to one second. That's Bullet fine. spread increased by fifty percent. Bullet spread is always at maximum, so Bastion can no longer snipe you across a map. <laughs> um, uh, magazine size increased from two hundred to three hundred. Headshot damage multiplier has been removed. No, uh, no longer deals critical damage. His recon configuration, the bullet spread is decreased by 25%. Magazine size increased from 20 to 25. Self-repair can now be used while moving. It's bound to secondary fire, and it's no longer interrupted by taking damage. A new resource meter has been added that will, that will deplete while self-re- self-repair is active and recharges when not in use. So it'll be like Divas de- Defense Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Um... His tank configuration no longer grants bonus armor, but he has a new passive, uh, which Blizzard calls Ironclad, and he takes 35% less damage while in sentry or tank configuration. So, I don't think the tank armor loss matters. Yeah. No. No. If anything, I think that it improves it because a big thing with when I know that a big thing when I play with just randoms, when there's a bastion in tank formation is people are always either running away or trying to get as much damage off of them as possible. Yeah. But then they're relying on splash damage for the most part. Yeah. Which, and you're trying to chip down armor, is just gonna, it's gonna reach in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, D.Va, there's a change to her defense matrix. Yeah. And it's yeah. interesting. This, this is, is gonna actually be a, a really good change because of Roadhog. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the... The distance between where it starts, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Projectiles like Roadhog's chain hook or Tracer's pulse bomb no longer need to travel a minimum distance before they can be blocked. Yep. And I don't know that why that wasn't a thing before. Same. That's kind of a like, lot. Of, a lot of these are like uh, Blizzard. Were were you paying attention when you designed your game? Yeah. Blizzard, um, please. Yeah. Uh, Maze cryo freeze can now be targeted by allies. Mercy. While performing a resurrection, Mercy now becomes temporarily invulnerable, along with the allies being revived. That's such a good thing. Yeah. yeah. The amount of times that, that I so die while reviving the entire team is staggering. Yep. 
um, the her staff, Zenyatta, can no longer be targeted when Transcendence is active. Which because, I didn't know you, you know, could do. <laughs> uh, and then two new hero options, Guardian Angel Sensitivity and Beam Sensitivity. Choosing who you target with either of those, respectively. Uh, Sombra got Hack Sensitivity, Adjusted Sensitivity on who you're hacking. Torbjorn's Rivet Gun. <laughs> Ammo is now l- loaded earlier in the reload animation. Good. That reload animation is so long. Now you can reload cancel with Torbjorn. Take that as you will. I mean, it's oh. still Torbjorn, <laughs> so still it doesn't Torbjorn. matter. <laughs> I saw that earlier. Um, Widowmaker, grappling hook sensitivity. Zarya, projected barrier sensitivity. Zenyatta, harmony and discord orb sensitivity. All and then, the things that should have been in the game before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, map balance changes. On Eichenwald. A second gate no longer closes after the payload passes through the castle doors. Instead, rubble from the damaged doorway partially blocks the entrance. I really like that change because as it stands right now, mostly the only characters who can get through that tiny hole are Farah, a very well-aimed Junkrat projectile, and like Widowmaker. Yeah. Yeah. And Mercy if she follows the Farah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That helps make the map a lot less biased. Biased towards defense. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. When it gets to that Because that last push is insane. Yeah. Um, bug fixes, just in general, P- fixed an issue. Well, we don't need to go through those, actually. <laughs> but Torbjorn can now put his turret on the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my favorite one. <laughs> Maps. Torbjorn can now construct turrets on the stairs in Oasis. Dandy. Real neato. Neato torpedo, if you know what I'm saying. That's all I have to say about Overwatch. Um, I think these changes are going to be real good. I think they're going to be all right. The more I think about the Bastion changes, the more I really like the idea of recon mode taking less damage. Yeah. Because Bastion is so squishy in recon mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's That's the one where he moves around, right? Yes. I have I've never Recon mode is just Bastion. regular ass robot mode. <laughs> oh, cool. But yeah. it's very slow. Yeah. 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 It's very slow and there isn't enough damage output. Yeah. Mm. And, like, That's considering one of the big things with um, sentry mode... Mm-hmm. Is that he can like shoot things yeah. at a f- insane speed? He, they, she, uh, omnic <laughs> person. It. It's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> it deserves a little bit more give in that sense. And also, in terms of the gun, like the few times that I've played Bastion in random heroes or mystery heroes and all that jazz. Mm. I, I run out of ammo so yeah. fast on that gun. Yeah. I don't even think 25 is enough no, for that. No. Like, Bastion in recon mode is legitimately just a bad Soldier 76. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Slow and clunky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I guess that wraps up Overwatch. Woo. Woo. I Unless you guys D.Va. have more to say about Ooh. it. I want to try D.Va. I, I want to see how sensitive that new... Um, a defense matrix is going to be. Yeah. It's going to basically make... Because, like, in the matchup against Roadhog specifically, mm. D.Va gets shredded. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. D.Va gets absolutely destroyed against Roadhog. Yeah. Um, so what this defense matrix buff is going to do is, say, if Roadhog hooks you, if they're a bad Roadhog, now you don't take any shotgun damage. Yeah. And that's a very big game changer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So... I, I'm really looking forward to seeing her played in more competitive scenarios now. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes Whoa. came out this week. It's really good. It's really good. Haven't played it. That's okay. Uh, it has a lot of polish for a mobile game. I was very happy when I turned it on and it did not make my phone hot and it opened on the first try. Yeah. Woo. Yep. Take a note, Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fire Emblem works. <laughs> yeah. Fire Emblem was also not developed by Niantic. I know. <laughs> it was developed by Intelligent Systems. Intelligent Systems and published by Nintendo. I think I'd be more mad if people if so many people owned Chrome and they got them the exact same way that you got Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Oh yeah. If I'd you just livid. like walked away from spawn. Yeah. It's like, oh Chrome appeared. <laughs> <laughs> He's there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have them though. Uh, yeah, it's real fun. Yeah, I really enjoy the changes they made to make it more mobile gamey. Yes, like, the thing that I like the most 
is that you can see the weapons triangle in the bottom of the screen. That has oh saved my me God. so much because the amount of times that I just blatantly forgot what was what yeah. in the Fire Emblem games is astonishing. The weapon yeah. triangle isn't that hard, though. Hey, shut up. It's literally <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. I know, but for some reason... You think reason, I don't have trouble remembering that? But it was just... <laughs> I think it was because like I was trying to apply logic to it, so I'm like, in what scenario does a sword beat an axe? You don't need to do that. Yeah. You just need to know that a sword beats an axe. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I always forgot that. What I did know is that arrows are bad against flying things. <laughs> arrows are good against flying things. No, that's what I mean. I mean, they're good, oh, yeah. they're good on the one thing. Yeah. But also, can't, can't the flying thing also, like, attack from two spaces away? No. No. Never mind. Uh, only if specific if scenarios. If they have a javelin, they can. Oh, okay. Or in Fates, there's a class called the Kinshi Knight. Okay. Which is basically just a mounted bowman. Okay. So you can attack from two spaces away, but you also die by your own weapon. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one problem I have with it uh, is... There was no real tutorial stuff on the extras. Yeah. Yes. There was no tutorial on a lot. Yeah. Um, and I currently have one unit that I rely on. Yeah. Like, it's. I got a really good pull from the orb summoning. It was Perry from Fire Emblem Fates. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. First of all, she's my wife. Second of <laughs> all, uh, she's my wife. Third of all. I, I see your type. <laughs> Sadistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and murderous. Oh, you know. Tell me that's wrong, though. <laughs> All she needs is for her hair to, like, be neon. It already is. I know, but, like, more neon. Like, glows in the dark <laughs> neon. Uh, yeah. Like, hair dyed with glow sticks. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. It is. It is. It'll probably destroy your hair. Also, don't shoot up with glow sticks. Yeah, what? What? Some, We're some, not. <laughs> somebody did that on a thousand ways to die. Oh my god! I'm like you're a fucking idiot. But it was also a rave, and there were other drugs involved. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. I think I remember that episode. Oh. Don't inject glow sticks into yep. your veins. Don't do that. That was one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Up there with did the Charlie Sheen glow? episode. Yeah. The episode where <laughs> the guy electrocuted himself because he wanted to fuck a cow heart. Yep. What? Um. <laughs> moving on. What a. Great <laughs> yeah, what a great place to end that chapter of my life. <laughs> um, Fire Emblem Heroes is very solid. I like yeah, it. I really like it. My biggest complaint is uh, how little orbs you get for what you do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you get one orb per beaten stage. I think it, I think it should be one for the first one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's what I think it should be. Like, well, maybe not that much. Maybe like, maybe like one, two, two, three, three. Yeah, so that's that. a lot more balanced. I also wish they increased it with the difficulty. Yes. Because yeah. when you go to play hard missions, it's you still, still get one. one. Yeah, and in it should, order to... It should be doubled. Yeah. In order to fill out... Whatever. Uh, like, to get the five summons you need for one go, you yeah. need 20 orbs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's to be not fair. explained. Yeah, that's not explained at all. Yeah. To be fair, that's a good thing for five summons. Yeah. This, this, like, honestly, this game reminds me a lot of Brave Frontier. Mm. Brave Frontier, it was five per. I think you also had better chances at getting better heroes, too. Yeah. But the fact that they decrease it even just a little bit, that's something that mobile games usually don't do. Yeah. Yes. I, th that's really my biggest complaint is that they, we, they just need to drop more orbs. Because yeah. once you beat a mission... If you replay that mission, you don't get the reward again. Yeah. So you can't grind in this game. Like, mm -hmm. once you're done, I don't know if there's post-game. I'm not that far. I'm in Chapter 8. You can play on normal, hard, and lunatic. That's yeah. all I know. That's it? Yeah. Ew. So that's... I imagine they can add more content, considering there's more heroes. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they absolutely will. But, like, if there's no post-game, like, what happens when I beat all the missions? And what if I don't unlock everyone? I'm just stuck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have to buy money. Yeah. I wish it was easier to level up heroes and to, like, have them get experience. I know it's going to be a Fire Emblem game, so, like, if they die, they don't get experience. Whatever. That's not... I'm not bitter about that. But I wish the requirements for leveling up heroes were a little bit easier. Like, it was a little easier to get the universal gems or whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. um, right now, it's just quests. Like, yeah. rewards and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yep. There's one area on the map when you go to battles that's still grayed out. 
and I don't know what that is. Yeah, mm. I think that might... That might be coming later. It might be coming later. It might be post-game. There's yeah. also the paralogue section, which is blacked out until you finish the campaign. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but you unlock paralogue after? I, that's what I assume. All right. I have no clue. I just know that when I open battle and click story and go to either main story or paralogue, paralogue is still not available. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. But I really like it. I'm yeah. still grinding from a boy Hector. Hector best girl. My... <laughs> My biggest complaint about that comes from the summons specifically. Yeah. yeah. Because once you lock yourself into the summons, that is your summoning circle. Yeah. And I wish they'd randomize it after you summon. That's what I wish. And then, like, you could choose from there. Yeah. And, or, like, you had obviously less of a chance to get what you want. Yeah. But it would reward you more for doing. Yeah. Because I'd full. rather take a gamble on getting, like, one bad unit versus, like, a good unit or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you could have an option of, like, oh, I could stay with this one or, like, roll for a new one or, like, self-pick one, but your chances of getting a five-star are a lot lower or something. Yeah. They counteract like, that, though. That's true. Well, they give you a pity five-star if you don't pull one for a while. Yeah. So how like, many? Because I've pulled... No, how many... How many... If you have oh, to after have like X amount. I don't know the exact number. Okay. But I know I think people I've have pulled... actually proven that oh. if you just don't get one for a while, you get uh, like a pity five star. Because I've pulled, I think, 20 heroes at this point, And they've all been three and four. Mm. You're, you're probably going to get one soon. My second pull was a five star. Mine too. I pulled Camilla. She's broken. I pulled Perry. And I love her, so it's okay. <laughs> I, I got Marth pretty early, but I, I don't really like Marth. I find him very boring. Yeah. Very generic. He's he's pretty good in Shadow Dragon on the DS. But other than that, yeah. My, um, my main gripe with that just comes from the fact that all I needed was a green unit. Just one. And it took three attempts at a, at a summon before I even got a green option. Oh, yeah. So I, I went through 60 orbs to get, Just to get two th- mediocre green orbs. Yeah. I was mad as hell because yeah. both of those mass summons were all either colorless or blue. Mm. It's like, I don't need blue. I have enough blue. I've gotten Corrin three times. I've gotten Robin twice. I don't need any blue. I need green and my boy Crom. I don't, to- I don't need any more reds. Yeah. Give them I, to me. I need a lot of reds. I have a one swordsman. Really? That's good. Like, I have a couple swordsmen, but only one of them is, like, passable, and it's fucking Laszlo. Oh. I, maybe, I would... maybe there should be, like, a trading heroes feature. I think, I think it might break the game, and they'd have to rebalance it a little bit, but maybe the option should be there. Hmm. I wish what they would do is one thing that I remember from playing... I played that Dragons game, that other free-to-play game. Oh, uh, Puzzle and Dragons? Yeah. Where if you, like, you could get basic orbs or you could, like, save up and get premium orbs, which are always guaranteed to have better yeah. things. That okay. would be very much so. Worth yeah. It. Or, like, a premium summon. Yeah. Where it's just 10 per and you're guaranteed, a, like, a five or six star. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd grind to, like, 25 or 30 orbs if it meant that I was at least guaranteed like two fours or like one yeah. five if yeah. it guarantees you at least a four star then i'd say that'd be worth yeah it. yeah because four stars are still busted four stars are still yeah. very very good like oh my girl cordelia <laughs> i um, don't care if she's a pegasus nine useless as shit against arrows she's <laughs> she's very helpful against literally everything else <laughs> one thing that was interesting to see was everyone re-rolling for heroes. yeah i was like know about that it was like oh don't link your nintendo account until you roll you're, like until after you're happy with a re-roll and i was like but, what it's too late what? for me I, just, I know i hate that everybody finds this shit out like after i've already done it yeah because the same thing happened with pokemon go when you could pick your starter like who figures out that if you walk away from a free charmander free squirtle or free bulbasaur that you'll get a pikachu yeah I, that was just somebody who like forgot it was in their hand and was like there's a pikachu yeah I I hate like the oh it has to be perfect right from the get go. Yeah. Like that it's like it's a fucking mobile game. It does not need to be like you don't need to be good at it, you know? What did the re-rolling even do? Um you could just uh what you do oh is God, you just uninstall know. and reinstall your game and Is it like you your introductory the... orbs? Yeah. 
You just get, uh, at the start of the game, you get like 25, 30 orbs just by existing. Yeah. And you just use those orbs to re-roll until you get units you Oh, have. okay. Yeah. So it was that kind of re-rolling. I was yeah. like, could I have gotten a game where I didn't have a fucking Sharina and whatever the fuck nah. main blue-haired pro tag with oddly blonde okay. tips is? So that's actually another problem I have with this game. What, the, mm. the basic units are trash? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And it, not even that they're trash. If they had any, like, distinction that told you that they were trash, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. But I went through five or six chapters in this game thinking they were at least rank three. Nope. Because their colors, like, in their little borders, yep. were the exact same color as a four-star. Yes. I, like... They're one and two-star characters. Yeah. yeah. Anna's garbage. Yep. Anna's so... It's, oh. Oh, don't even get me started on And considering on Anna. I didn't have green summons, I was stuck with her for a very long time. Yep. Don't even I'm, get me started I'm on still Anna. Stuck as, with someone, Anna. as someone who's a fucking Fire Emblem waifu is Hector, don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, She's a disgrace. Mine's Krom. <laughs> I just want my Krom. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a good mobile game. It's a really nice time killer with a lot of flaws that could very easily be fixed. Yes. If they let you, like... B- the biggest improvement I could see for this game is if they just let you play your music while the game is up. Yeah. And, like, have the game's music just turn off. Can you not cheat it? Because I know Pokemon Go released a thing very recently yeah. about that. And what I, I mean, used I, to do was I'd just, I'd open the game and then, keeps, open, the, and then open, open the music. music. Yeah. I did that with this. It worked, but the music in Fire Emblem didn't stop playing. Okay. Oh, you can't, no like, go into option? settings and I, turn it off? I, I, I can't even fucking find where the buttons are, okay, yeah. honestly. Okay, yeah. I want to look for that real the quick. The interface yeah. is a little Yeah, I wish, that, I wish they had polished up the UI a little bit better. Yeah. My main thing is I just wish that it was more user accessible because like Dan was saying, like I didn't even know. I knew you could give yourself skills. I didn't know where to find that. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, still don't. If you go into. You can show me after this. Yeah. We don't need okay. <laughs> it, that's a lot. It's a much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I am hopeful though because Animal Crossing is supposed to be coming out next month. And that's a game that I enjoy a lot more than Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, and that's kind of why I brought it up. Is that if if they can transfer like the full Fire Emblem experience into a mobile game so well, I'm very excited to see what yeah. happens with Animal Crossing. Because like, Animal Crossing has the perfect formula for a mobile absolutely. game. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, Do you know how they're going to do it at all? No. I had predictions. Let me, let me find my article of predictions because I had some really good ones. <laughs> Uh, this can be found at thelifecast.net. I'll also link it in the podcast description. Um, um, if you go, if you open the app and you go into like the basic settings, it'll lead you to the home page. Hit miscellaneous. And that's volume? And go to settings. Thank God. Okay, never mind. You can oh, fix cool. the SE volume, the voice volume, BGM volume, and then there's also silent mode, which you can toggle on and off. All right. I'll just turn BGM volume all the way down. Yeah. You can also turn off a number of auto animations if that's what's killing your battery. Frankly, it's, I don't find I, this game to be a battery sucker at, at all. It does not, it's, yeah. It's weird. And it's a hand warmer, not a hand cooker. <laughs> like, I feel it on my hand, and I'm like, you know, this is like a gentle warm. Yeah. Sometimes I play Pokemon Go, and I'd be like, this is hurting my leg. Yeah. yeah. I think my, I think my <laughs> phone I like case it. makes my makes the feeling hotter, because uh-huh. this is like fake leather. Yeah. That'll do it. And, and like, leather keeps everything hot. Yeah. Yep. And, like, I don't know what it is. I think it's just the game, like, not liking my phone. But this thing destroys my RAM. Yeah, because you, you said that. Yeah. And it's like, mine doesn't. Yeah. I do not lose battery. I don't lose... It doesn't make it super hot. Maybe maybe it's just the phone. It, it, it might, could yeah. be the way it's optimized. It might To be. thread things. Because I've had to force close this game exactly once I've, when it got stuck, and it saves your progress, yeah. even if you finished a mission. I force close it out of habit just to save battery. I've never really force closed it. It's just kind of like... Whenever I'm, I was done with the game, I just take it off of multitasking and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And m- what my phone does is it disc- it uh, displays uh, how many megabytes you freed up of your RAM after you close all your uh, applications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This app uses up a third of my RAM. Yikes. And this is like a standard two gigs of RAM phone. Yeah. Like it's not... Oh, it's not like mine that's like, oh, you have six gigs of RAM yeah. in your phone. You have almost enough RAM to be like an A small gaming PC. computer. Yeah. You have like, more <laughs> RAM than my mom and dad's first computer. Like, yeah. Like, ever. 
Yeah. Um, their first computer was a four gigs, <laughs> which um, is how much my first iPod had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Animal Crossing Mobile. First of all, I want to be able to pick my own villagers. <laughs> And that's something I got really happy about when Welcome Amiibo came out, mm-hmm. is that you could choose who you want in your town. It it opened up a lot, and I was happy about that. Would you be okay if there were, like, say, like, 15 that you could select from? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But I, not just, like, here's your default villager. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. like, he, here's 15. Pick the 10 you like the best. Yeah. I think 10 is a good village size. Yeah. yeah. 10 plus you. That's, um, that's just enough to handle, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Because the whole thing with Animal Crossing is, like, you're supposed to have a nice little tight-knit little community. Neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, nice little neighborhood. And 10 is, like, a good cap. Yeah. Yeah. That that's, was... like, the amount of people you get to know on your street. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big thing that I ran into when I was playing my Animal Crossing, the home designer one. Was like there are so many. You, there are so many, and it's like it's not so much that you get tired of them, but when you can visit people's houses, you're like, man, there's so many villagers. Yeah, and no. people still want me to build homes for them. Yeah, how many of you are there? <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be like if you had to build an individual Smurf house for every Smurf. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> what the main thing I wanted to see mm-hmm. in Animal Crossing Mobile is to. This is not something Fire Emblem Heroes does well at all. Okay. But I want to be able to, like, add friends easier. Yes. It's something that Mitomo actually did very well. Mitomo did that incredibly well for how poorly made that app was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if they could take that feature and put it into the Animal Crossing thing. Or just all of their mobile games, or really. Or all of them, yeah. Like, Fire Emblem, like, you or have even, a... Or you link it up through Nintendo ID. Yeah. It's all like, synced. Fire yeah. Emblem. Fire Emblem has you make a username and you still need to use a friend code to add people. Yeah. And it's like a 15 digit number too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not even it, like It's not user yeah. friendly at it's all. It's not even yeah. like BattleNet's like four digit system, which yeah. is fine. You know, it's like I don't even remember. It's like, like some fucking social amount of number. number. Yeah. <laughs> um one thing that I'd like to see added in a lot of these mobile games is kind of like how the um, beam works when you transfer yeah, contacts yeah, between yeah. androids. Yeah. Like, like tap it with NFC. Yeah. And there are some phones that don't have NFC, and yeah. that's the only barrier that I could see. But yeah. that's... Mine. But have it as oh, an really? option. Yeah. Oh. Like, in yeah. addition to, like, how... 200. <laughs> like, Snapchat and how Mitomo worked. Like, oh, match your... Match your... Yeah. Match your symbol. symbol. Or, that, like, scan this code. Yeah. It's just, like, it's super intuitive and just, like, encourages people to be like, hey, you have this game. Let me add you. Not... Hey, let me try and find the page where my randomly generated number is, and then you can try and read it, even though there's like 15 numbers and numbers look the same. Oh, after hold on, a while. wait, let me read it to you. You switched a couple of them there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, double check. Oh, it's not coming up. Oh, oh shit! You hit a seven instead of a six. Oh, oh fuck. Oh damn. Um. What if we just make them QR codes? Yeah. Yeah. Like QR codes Snapchat are really does. great. Like the way Snapchat does it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That solves all problems. I love that we have all the solutions. Like, <laughs> we have we have all the solutions, but we're just making more problems for ourselves as a human race. <laughs> like, oh, we could we could solve our overfishing problem. We're just not doing it. We could solve, like, the fact that we're destroying our Earth with fossil fuels. We're just not doing it. It's not like I don't want to launch into that conversation right now, but, like... <laughs> it's not like we have clean, renewable energy already. Oh, man. I, I love that, like, Onion article. That it's like, <laughs> scientists gently remind the world that clean, renewable energy is ready to go whenever. <laughs> 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 but, Deanna, it's not aesthetic to have a windmill in your backyard. Fucking yes, it is. Give me a windmill in my, uh, my ass backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stick a windmill in your ass. <laughs> oh, hi. Maybe a pinwheel. A pinwheel. <laughs> oh. I'd walk around with a pin, like a little pinwheel sticking out of my butt. <laughs> That's probably a butt plug somewhere. Oh, uh, we're moving oh, on. It absolutely <laughs> is. We're moving on. Um, Animal Crossing Mobile. Here's what I want to see. <laughs> uh. Um. Boop. I like I want it I want it to ha- I want to have like you know you have your little hub and you have your little thing. I don't want you to be able to buy furniture though. 
I just want you to be able to customize your house. Do they sell pinwheels? Uh, you get pinwheels <laughs> from Street Pass. <laughs> and you hold them in your hand. <laughs> there are different colors. <laughs> None of them are brown. Stop going there. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. Are they like Vivalon and Pokemon X and Y? Where yeah. it has different patterns depending on your region? That would be very cool. That would be really cute. That would be adorable. Or and like what? Time Zone? Yeah. Oh my god. And it would like encourage you to travel, but like not a whole lot to the point where like you need it, but like it's a little extra. Yeah. Um, like I don't think you got anything for getting all the Vivalon colors no, except like don't. bragging rights. Yeah. You, you get, that's it. It's all bragging rights. Yeah. But there were a lot, like, so many Vivillon colors. Well, yeah. But, I mean, how many time zones are there? <laughs> More Vivillon <laughs> colors than there are time zones. That's what I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Another thing I wanted was, like, more of a community aspect. Because mm-hmm. in Animal Crossing New Leaf, you only had the Club Tortimer. And, like, that, even that was, like, ah, it's all right. And people were really shitty on it, actually, yeah. once you got into it. Um. Okay, I'm bleeding, but that's fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, casually. Um, as you do. As you do. As Hashtag just elf things. Hashtag. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, like, I'll link the article down below. Um, but <sighs> the main thing I wanted to see was, like, people really loved Animal Crossing New Leaf when it came out. Like, it was... It seemed to be a huge, like, revival because they changed so much and they actually listened to the fan base. And they had developers on it that, like, after it came out, I looked into it. I was like, yeah, we really loved working on this game. Like, they had a, a really diverse dev studio. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the only Nint- one of the only Nintendo games where, like, half the dev studio was women. And, like, that that's important. That's yeah. a thing we should have. That's absolutely something that we should have. Um diversity is a good thing yeah and it made animal crossing super accessible and i want animal crossing mobile to like do that again i want everyone to get so excited about animal crossing like hey this you know it's a little a little oasis of of warmth and happiness the thing that i'm most concerned about with animal crossing is that since it's like not to use like this term but like it's a more like child oriented game yeah I, i don't want the app to also be like a weird mix of the two because I feel like in a lot of situations like that, you can't have things like communication. Yeah. Because like then you'll have people just swearing and children will see swearing, which is a whole other issue entirely. Yeah. I think it should be restricted to like between your friends list. Okay. So like how Mitomo is. Yeah. yeah. Like how I can send you fuck you, but not all of Mitomo can see that right. I said fuck you. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. that makes sense then, because that was yeah. a big concern of mine, because especially, like, with uh, the Pokemon bandwagon catching on again, mm. Nintendo's definitely, like, a lot of their games are still have that child-oriented feel, yeah. but adults still play them. Yeah, because, you know, it's Nostalgia. what we grew up with. Yeah, and I have no knock against that, but when you try and make something that's, sorry, going to no. coordinate all the fan bases together, mm. you have to find a delicate medium, Yeah, <laughs> or else you're going to have kids asking their parents what, what certain words me? mean. <laughs> yeah. Mommy, what is the fuck word? <laughs> <laughs> what is the fuck word? <laughs> yeah. Where did you hear that? <laughs> On my phone. <laughs> Unrelated. That's why I really hate, like, edgy theories about kids' movies. It's like, please, just take it at face value. It's a fucking kids' movie. Please, 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 please. You mean, like, the one about how no face wants sense virginity? Exactly! <laughs> I fucking hate it! It's like, I, please, please, just take Spirited Away at face value. This is, full stop! Spirited Away is a movie about a child and a river spirit. End of story. Goodbye. <laughs> I got really mad. I'm so, I was steaming. I know. <laughs> I know you were. <laughs> oh, God. Like, that's always been my thing. It's like, okay, I don't need to see the Disney princesses hopped up on drugs. Please. Just let things be things. Like, make up the cute theories. Like, how Tarzan and Elsa and Anna are related. Yeah. Those are cute theories. That's cute. And, and make it a little bit less sad that their parents died at sea. And yeah. instead died by a jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit less sad. <laughs> oh god. But this isn't a podcast about all of that. 
I still have Hakuna Matata stuck in my head. Hakuna it's been like 50 Matata. minutes. I know. Songs don't leave my head very easily. I always just think of the ending. And then it's gone. That's the part I've stuck in my head. Oh, great. <laughs> like, you know that breakdown in Hakuna Matata where, like, all Hakuna. of a sudden, Simba it yeah. just, like, it belts out musical notes? I have that one part stuck Ooh. in my head. The best part. We're not going down that rabbit hole. (laughs) (laughs) That's Alice in Wonderland, silly. Yeah, and she's not on drugs the entire time. Well, I mean, in the book she was. I mean, on the book she was. But, like, in the movie. In the movie, we can... Like, that's, like, the one theory that I accept, because I'm like, that that book was a mess. Yeah. Lewis Carroll was a mess. (laughs) All writers are messes. Not all of them. Most of them. Uh, yeah, a good bunch of them. <laughs> good but like, bunch. every once in a while, there's that that golden one. Yeah, I'm not looking at you, Nathaniel Hawthorne. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I my ha- god, the I- Scarlet Letter was so dry. It was just so boring. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's this deep mystery about who who done it, who who I impregnated think- the whore. <laughs> there are three <laughs> characters. Yeah, there are three, and dudes. one of them's a child. <laughs> <laughs> the child did it. No. One of them's her husband the who in the it. second chapter is like, I didn't do it. There's a guy and a priest, and the priest is the only one acting sus. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I had Spoiler a- alert to everybody who hasn't read that book. <laughs> Spoiler alert to this book that's been out since the 1600s. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, I had a used copy of that when I was in high school. <laughs> In the margin, someone just wrote, the priest did it. In, like, chapter four. (laughs) And I was like, ah, thank you. Don't have to read it. That's why I became an English major. (laughs) For the used books and handy margin notes. Like, I know you don't really like Harry Potter, but that just reminds me of the entire premise of the sixth book. Yeah? Where Harry just has, like, a written up copy of one of the spell books and it has all the correct answers in it (laughs) that's really great it's like oh this is how you make the spell and then in the margins it's like actually you do this (laughs) (laughs) oh man it's been a nice 50 minutes we've talked about exactly two games yeah we went really in depth yeah yeah, i was like but we we actually talked about yeah considering most of us are like half asleep right now it's been just angry (laughs) Half asleep or angry or in pain. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Or both. Um, yeah. Today was not the best weather-wise, and I think that's where I, we're all kind of out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Considering my I, my 8 a.m. got canceled, and I didn't, I forgot about it because he canceled it earlier in the semester. I, I just went into class at 8 a.m. was like, oh, man, I have, like, I'm like a minute late. I go up there, and there's nobody in the room. And yep. like, at least you Shit. had a reminder that your class was canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't look at it. But then like 10:50 rolled around and I was like, man, it's really fucking gross outside. Yeah. My class is across the street and I don't want to go outside. Dan and I Dan and I were walking down the street today. We were talking about the snowfall. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> We we were both like, we have never seen snow so thick. And I just go, yeah, that snow had ass. <laughs> 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 like I literally i was i was walking to the bathroom at work today and there i walked by like this uh fucking courtyard area yes mm-hmm. <laughs> and like there were there were snowflakes the size of my palm yeah i do not have small palms it was Gross. clumpy snow today yeah it was yeah yeah it was like all the snowflakes found buddies or they yeah. had little orgies in the sky oh god <laughs> i don't want to think of snow that way Gross. <laughs> Is that how snow pre- reproduces? <laughs> I think it's just water. Shh. <laughs> um, I've hit this mic so many times. It hasn't been picking it up. I'm really glad because I've been an idiot with this mic. That's why we have it on a shock mount. Um, but yeah. I'm going to hit it more. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, the roads were not bad today. The only part that was bad was when we got into boston and we spent an hour in traffic trying to get to this building because of and the i had parade. to walk for 15 minutes because of the parade yeah because of the parade you speaking of things i think are overrated you know what weather hey. you know what this hey, weather what? inspired though what? that we should actually just have an underground tunnel between somerset and sawyer yeah that'd be nice there should i just would be not a- have to put on a coat for 30 seconds to go outside yeah. <laughs> just an underground tunnel to every building yeah or you know an actual campus 
Mm. <laughs> Would we also live in a biodome? Yeah. I don't know. On the moon! <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I can't wait for some asshole to drill a hole in the biodome. <laughs> Some yeah, that's, like that who thinks the, that he's hot shit. That's the real detriment to humans living on the moon is some little shit would like destroy the biodome. Yeah. With a little hole. And everyone would be like, ah oh, fuck, Jimmy, why'd you do it? No, it'd be ah oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're on the other end of the biodome. So it's like they're they they they're the only one that has their space gas mask on. <laughs> it's like, "Ah oh, fuck, Jimmy, why'd you do it?" and then they take it off to reprimand him and then they die. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I can't wait for the singularity to kill us. It's going to be great. <laughs> either either we're going to colonize the moon and Mars and die because someone was an idiot or we're going to give machines too much power. Like androids, not the phone, but like, you know, artificial intelligence. We're going to give them too much power and they're going to kill us. There's a whole album about that, actually. It's called The Uncanny Valley. It's one of my favorites. It's really good. Or it'll be like Wally and we'll all just get real fat. There's another album like that, too. It's called Iconoclast by Symphony Act. It's fantastic. <laughs> or, you know, the entire world will melt. Yeah. Because the EPA I'm really looking, won't exist. I'm really looking forward to the inevitable heat death of our planet. Not, not the sun. <laughs> our planet. All right, guys. Um... Side note, did you see that video about the star exploding today? Yeah. It was really cool looking. Yeah. Um, All y'all should watch that. Yeah. Uh, the Hubble Space Telescope uh, captured the death of a star. Ooh. Cool. You don't um, need to know anything about science, just that things look pretty. Yeah. It's, cool. It looks really cool. Um, and really scary. Yeah. Because our, is- is scu- <laughs> our sun is a scun. <laughs> <laughs> our sun is a star. Yeah. Yeah. One day that will happen to our sun. Our sun, our sun will expand and then burn out. I don't think it'll it'll explode and like turn into a black hole like the like the one in the in the video did. When it explodes, does the exploding like sun bits or star bits also fall into the black hole yes. or do yeah. they? Okay, it it, it, it explodes, collapses in on itself, and like the black hole absorbs okay because i was like that'd be horrifying if the sun just exploded and like all the little sunbeams just like blew up all the planets (laughs) it would be like a gigantic (laughs) death star that nobody lives on (laughs) literally a death star (laughs) (laughs) all right um one one last thought before we jump into our closing segment here uh i realized on saturday that while i don't like metal music I listen to the metal of EDM. Which is? Which is Perturbator and Ghost and Carpenter Brut and all the other artists that I'm like, yeah, you should go listen to this dude. Danger. Not so much Medeon and Porter Robinson. They're they're like the indie rock yeah. <laughs> of EDM. No, that's exactly what they are. That's why yeah. I like them. Yeah. They're, yeah. Like, I, this week has just been like, you know, Diana, hmm. you you think your music tastes are really unique, but just like take a step back <laughs> <laughs> and realize that it's just computer metal and computer pop. Goodbye, good night. <laughs> 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 oh God. Um, and your music taste is trash. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so. To close out here, we didn't ask questions because I I forgot. I had a lot on my mind today. I forgot. Uh, so we went to the website for millennials called BuzzFeed dot com. Gross. <laughs> yeah, I hate BuzzFeed. Straight up, I don't think BuzzFeed is real journalism. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I mean, they they do news stories, but it's really clickbaity They're also and like shitty. Yeah, and like hashtag relatable, like. Hashtag relate. I want to buy the Corgi shirt from them, though. Yeah. Um, it's real cute. So we're going to do a quiz together, all of us. <laughs> the ultimate white person quiz. Yep. This oh. is trashy as shit. Get ready. We're going to build a smoothie, and BuzzFeed is going to guess our birth month. You can feel the melanin seep out of your skin as you play <laughs> along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz 
Feet is like the whitest website. <laughs> okay, we're gonna choose a fruit, guys. Are we doing this collectively <gasps> yeah, or we're individually? Do- we're doing this collectively. Oh, we need to figure out our collective birth month. <laughs> <laughs> What's like in the middle of all our birthdays? Yeah, months. we need to. We Do need we to need to take the average? Yes, we'll take an average. <laughs> yes. Okay. Average number. Okay. So I'm are we just gonna like add our birth our birth months like? Yes. And, and add then, them like, together. Divide them by four, and use that number. Yeah. Yes. All right. Hold on. Let me get. Thank you, calculator. Super. How how many are there? Twelve. Yes. Zodiacs. Well, I know there's twelve, 12 months. Zodiacs. <laughs> What zodiac? Yeah, do with it depends this? on what's what zodiac. Are we doing the one where that snake thing exists in the middle? What? Uh, they, oh, the what astrology. Drugs are you yeah. on? No, we're not doing that. Okay. Okay, my birth month is April, so that's a four. Mine's May. That's a five. Mine's January. That's a one. December. That's a twelve. Woo! <laughs> 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 uh, average is five and a half. <laughs> So I could not have gone January, better. February, February, so it's a March, May. April, May. It's so, May. Yeah. So Pat, do you we, get to keep we, your birthday. Do we round up or do we just keep it at five? We're going to keep it at five. I mean, okay. there's half of a month. Yeah. It, Pat, when is your birthday in May? The first week. Yeah. Okay. So it's not <laughs> actually like we just got Pat's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because mine is at the end of April. Oh, shit. <laughs> and meanwhile, Dan and I are the outliers <laughs> at the first and the twelfth. <laughs> birthday george is an actually shit so yeah may counting. would actually be <laughs> yeah we didn't need to do math we just needed to think <laughs> yeah but all right. we're all so, dead so we're aiming for may on this on this quiz yep. all right choose your f- fighter fruit i'm guessing <laughs> if one of these options is pineapple uh, we're uh, not picking Alex. pineapple what, what, what uh, are we got our choices bananas strawberries mixed berries Pineapple, kiwi, and mango. So pineapple, right, Dan? Pineapple is right out. Because <laughs> Dan's allergic. I vote mixed berry. I vote strawberries. Strawberries. I vote banana. <laughs> but banana is such an overpowering fruit taste. Yeah. I know, but it's like the best one. I know. Eh. But it always needs to be countered with something. Yeah. I, I guess the mixed berries in that case. Because you could put strawberry. Oh, yeah, there are strawberries in this picture of mixed Yeah, that's berries. why I was like, oh, why okay. is it just oh. like you can pick strawberries yeah. or is strawberries with diversity? Okay. <laughs> Choose a thickener. So, yeah. A Choose a what? Thickener? A thickener. What are our choices? Are they the various snow. forms of milk? <laughs> <The snow>. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter. We got peanut butter, yogurt, chia seeds, avocado, ice cubes, and no thanks. I'm going to be real white and say yeah, chia, chia seeds. Chia seeds. <laughs> So like they're sweet I know. and like so nice, and what they're the full of protein. Again? Peanut butter, yogurt, chia seeds, avocado, ice cubes, and no thanks. What are we making again? A smoothie. A smoothie. Oh, I thought we were making a milkshake for a second. What? All right. Don't put avocados yeah, in milkshake. That's Don't where put I avocados got confused. in smoothies. Well, some people like it. All right. Those people are white vegans. <laughs> <laughs> If we can't pick chia seeds, because I understand if you two haven't heard of them, I never heard, heard of cool. them. Cool. I also vote yogurt in that situation. Yeah, I vote. I vote a nice Greek yogurt. Okay. Yeah, let's go with the yogurt. Okay. Yogurt with the. Who t- the fuck would pick no thanks? Just like yeah, I'm gonna put these smoothies and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put these berries and these greens in this smoothie, and I'm just not gonna put anything else in. My it. roommate. Do you know what? Do you know what you do with that smoothie? You choke on it. <laughs> <laughs> my roommate used to do that. She had a Nutri Blender in oh our God. room, and she would put fresh fruit and water in it, and I would just die every uh, time. Oh, cool, hold on. That I think good. we might need to pause for a moment. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Um, we will. Yeah, I could. I could easily clip it out. <clears throat> so choose a liquid: water, milk, coconut water, fruit juice, and no thanks. Milk. 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 I was gonna say coconut water, but you know. What's I'll go with I'm milk. I'm also allergic to coconut. <laughs> uh, I <laughs> vote. In, in the Never case of smoothies, I water. always vote milk or almond milk, which oh, was not an option. Okay. I'd do almond milk. Any power boosts? Protein powder, spinach, goji berries, flax seeds, matcha powder, and no thanks. I say protein powder. I say goji berries. Spinach. <laughs> <laughs> spinach in smoothies is actually really good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It, it blends up a lot better than you think, so it's not just, like, eating leaves. Yeah. <laughs> um, you don't just suddenly become a brontosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> what was the 
were the options again? <laughs> Protein powder, spinach, goji berries, flax seeds, matcha powder. And no thanks. Goji berries. Okay. What the fuck is a goji berry? A it's type of berry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Isn't a banana technically a berry yeah. as well? Yes. So mixed berry literally included all of those options. Yeah. Wait, a banana is a berry? <laughs> yeah, yes, bananas a banana, banana is considered berries. a berry. And I think a strawberry isn't a berry, technically. Yeah, because the seeds are on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Strawberries are not berries. So maybe we should have picked strawberry. <laughs> 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 We're not. Okay. What the fuck? Uh, so we're I, giving Pat an existential crisis about fruit. So we're gonna pick goji berries. <laughs> yep. Is that the general consensus? They're yes. sweet and tangy. All right. They're very good. Make it sweeter, honey. I'll see myself out. <laughs> Peace uh, out, Girl Scout. Sugar and or stevia, honey, dates, vanilla extract, cinnamon, and no thanks. Honey. 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 Vanilla. Actually, no. Yeah, vanilla. Shit. Honey. I say honey. I vote honey. One of you rock paper scissors it out. I'm Damn it. <laughs> I'll also accept vanilla. Yeah, we but got I vanilla. grudgingly <laughs> accept vanilla. I threw paper, Dan threw scissors. Finally, mason jar or tall glass. I hate people who drink out of mason I was jars. Say mason jar. <laughs> A mason jar can hold so much more. I know. But every time I look at them, I'm just like Yeah, this one has a straw in it. <laughs> this picture Does it one? also have a lid? Yeah. Okay, that's acceptable then. The oh yeah, if it's just the mason jar with without the lid and it has a straw, it's like. Then yeah. How do you carry you're down? you're gonna drink this thick ass drink. My biggest through a straw when you have a wide mouth right in front. <laughs> My biggest oh. thing when it comes to the whole mason jar argument is just like I'm brutal as shit with my stuff. I just uh, chuck it on the ground. If yeah. I had a mason jar in my bag, I, there'd be glass. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just, I'll go tall glass. Just yeah, a, I, guess our, I guess our consensus is tall glass. Just got a tumbler from s- Starbucks. They're made of plastic. They're they also $30. Ha. I know, but they ha. won't break on you. <laughs> All right. We got October. <laughs> we fucked up. <laughs> What did we do? What did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? What happens if we answer honey? We went on BuzzFeed. <laughs> Let's find out. We, All right. We went on BuzzFeed. We're gonna, That's we're gonna where refresh we went and we're gonna we're gonna do our thing again. All right. So we picked mixed berries. Yep. We picked yogurt. Yep. Uh, milk. Yep. <laughs> Goji berry. Yep. yep. <laughs> honey. <laughs> and a tall glass. We got October again. <laughs> 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 so that didn't matter. What was the one that mattered? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. None mixed, of it matters. Mixed berries. We'll do chia seeds. Yes. <laughs> then coconut water. Hold on. Then goji bear the matcha powder. Okay. I think this is gonna give us like a really springtime result. Honey and a mason jar. Then we got August. <laughs> See? Summer. We're we're going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm so tempted to cheat this quiz so we get May. Hold on. May's just not an option. Alright. We're gonna pick pineapple. What happens if we pick All right, none Dan's for dead. most Sorry, of the Dan. options? Sorry, <laughs> Dan. Huh? What happens if we pick no thanks for All most right, we're of the options? Alright, we're gonna do pineapple. No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. Tall glass. It's just we a, got July. It's, <laughs> July is literally just a glass. <laughs> with a juice. pineapple puree. <laughs> uh. All right, uh, let's do kiwi. How chunky and stringy. Kiwi. We're gonna do ice cubes. Okay. okay. Fruit juice. Yep. Okay. Spinach. Yep. Yeah. Sugar. Okay. And a mason jar. Okay. October. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do that again. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. No, I wanna pick mango this time. This is the last one. Uh Mango's chia mango, chia seeds, coconut water. We're gonna do protein powder. <laughs> we're gonna do no thanks on the sweetener, and we're gonna do a tall glass. We got December. Okay. We can't get May. But we got Dan's <laughs> We got birthday. Dan's month. You're not allergic to mangoes, are you? No, I love mangoes. Okay, oh, okay. cool. <laughs> At least the fruit that you love did not betray you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was our podcast this week. It was really chill. Guys. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Do we have any other words? I, I just want to get Hakuna Matata stuck out of my head i got huh? a word effervescent what's that mean okay <laughs> what's that mean are we just gonna whisper our favorite words as softly into the mic whisper softly 
Pat, what's your favorite word? I don't know. Effervescent. It means... I'm not smart. Of a liquid? Pat, your favorite word could literally just be like, uh. Giving off bubbles or fizzy. It also means vivacious and enthusiastic. I'm a big fan of the word cozy. Cozy? Because it's associated with warm blankets and hot cocoa. (sighs) Maximum coz. Maximum coz. Rhymes with toes. Yeah. And knows and woes. Um, I'll, I'll I'll drop down another word for you guys. Iridescent, showing luminous colors that seem to change when seen from. Are you a angles. hollow sexual? What? What does that mean? What? I'm it, a bisexual. It, <laughs> it's an inside joke with a YouTube channel with a girl who really likes holographic things. Oh, probably yeah. It, it's literally. You know, have you seen the the gif of that car? It's it's a Japanese car because I've seen the video where it comes from, mm-hmm. and it's it has this finish on it that when it's riding under streetlights, it like rainbow colors. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's been my favorite thing for like five years. So much of me makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I will always have a space in my heart for ye. ye. I don't care how old that video is. Yeah. It will always make me smile. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of things about me make sense, guys. That's what that's what like this past month has been. It's just been realizing things I enjoy and why I enjoy them and I'm like, yeah. This yeah. It's good. It's good. It's really good. So, um, wow. <laughs> do we have anything else to say? I don't think so. No? This is gonna be- Thank you, Sydney. So what a wonderful <laughs> phrase. All right, we're going to go. Wow, what a great place to end it. Yeah, perfect. Um, bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. And we'll ask for questions uh, next week, I promise. Will we? Bye. Yeah. It means no worries oh, for the, the rest of your days. days. It's a (laughs) problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata.